Um, so hello, I'm Dr. Baumanis. For those of you guys who don't know me, um, I am the number two in your academy program. Dr. Voss, of course, is the number one. Um, and uh, I have been helping guide our academy coaches, of which you see most of them here, in um, directing the program. And I hope that, that you really, or we hope that you really enjoyed your experience this semester. So this is actually program managed by Leon. Leon is um, the program manager with the assistance of Ania. And who's your team, Leon? Um, Ania, Drishti, Nicole, Yukta, and Anit. Am I missing okay. anyone? I hope not. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but just a few words for our uh, founding president, and then we're gonna let Leon uh, kind of manage this program because uh, her and her team have done an exceptional job in doing this. Okay, Dr. Voss. Muted, Voss, you're muted. I'll tell the same story that I tell at the end of each semester to illustrate uh, what the Exculture program, the, the Exculture Academy program is supposed to give you. And the story goes like this. Um, two men are walking in, uh, in a forest somewhere in Canada. And uh, it's right around this time. And as you know, it's winter in Canada and the bears are sleeping, but somehow they're making a lot of noise and they wake up one big grizzly bear. And so the bear uh, jumps up and starts running after them. And so they're running away from the bear as fast as they can. And one man says, hey, why are we even trying? Uh, the bear is so much faster than humans. I mean, there is no way we can run faster than a bear. And the other man says, well, I don't have to run faster than a bear. I just need to run faster than you. And so the point here is that um, the world is becoming global. The workplace is becoming not only global, but now also virtual. Um, you have to do business internationally, even when you work for a local company, because that company will have uh, maybe international partners or international suppliers or international uh, customers or international employees. So you will have to do business internationally, even if you don't travel uh, to a different country. And most likely you will have to do business virtually. So you will have uh, projects where you will have to work with people in virtual teams. Now, have we made you an expert in global virtual business? Um, I'm not sure. I cannot say that you are a true expert and guru in international business quite yet. But have we made you better than your competition? Have we made you better than an average 16, 17 year old teenager who will be applying to college tomorrow or who will be applying for jobs or who will be applying for maybe scholarships or maybe investment? I would say we have. So unlike most kids your age, you have completed a project for a real company, your real international business project, working in a real international team with people from all around the world. And so that makes you maybe just a tiny bit, but better than your competition. So you don't have to be better than the best person on this planet. You just have to be better than those other 20 people who will be applying for same jobs, same scholarships, uh, same positions um, at universities and so on. And so that's the whole idea. In economics or in um, uh, management, it's called accumulated advantage. So uh, half a year ago, you were very much like just an average teenager your age. You had the same, you know, you went to school, you, you took your classes, you, you got your grades. So you were not that different from everybody else. Probably you were a little different, but overall there was really nothing that perhaps made you stand out uh, from the crowd of your peers. Now, at the end of this semester, all of a sudden you can say, I have completed this X culture project. I now have some experience in doing business. I have some experience in presenting online. I have experience of working with people from other cultures. So when you will be applying for those scholarships, they will be looking at your resume and at their resume. And so they're almost the same, but yours has the X culture certificate in it. And they're like, oh, that's very interesting. Okay, we've never seen anyone like this. So the difference is not huge, but let's take this person and admit to our program. So all of a sudden now there is a bigger difference because you are admitted and they are not. So a few years later, you have graduated from a good school, you have had a stipend, you have had a job. So your advantage accumulates. And as you move through life, that advantage accumulates more and more and more. And before you know it, you are a top CEO or top politician or top community leader. And your peers who didn't have that little advantage today 
uh, perhaps are still in some you know average job. And so that's exactly the idea. And so Exculture doesn't stop today. So there are many other programs you can participate with us. So you can move on to the coaching program. Hopefully soon enough, we will be doing the face-to-face -face symposia. We are talking about programs with Dr. Lilani about uh, related to you applying to colleges or graduate programs who will help you get in, in them. So there are several other things that you can still keep doing with Exculture. And then obviously there are many other programs in the world uh, that we hope you will like, not provided by Exculture, but equally useful, equally practical. And so the important thing here is that don't stop at simply going to school, getting good grades and doing your homework. So if you wanna if you wanna accumulate that advantage, you have to do more, and we can help you. I'll stop at this. So Leon, are you still here, Leon? Leon is with us in uh, South Africa, and she's she said that she's visiting her grandparents for the holidays out in the boondocks. <laughs> It's it's very uh, typical of us, right, to be from all over the world. And you guys are looking at the chat. I think me, Voss, and Emily are the only ones from the United States. Everybody else is from all over the world. And I just want to kind of give you guys, you know, um, the time to appreciate really how truly global we are right now and how like absolutely amazing it is that we could all have this, you know, global classroom or you guys can have all of these friends from all over it. It's such a gift to be able to communicate with you guys in this way and to connect with everybody in this way. And, and without, you know, without a blip, actually be so productive in developing, you know, ideas and, and uh, creating uh, programs. It's, it's just such a pleasure. Um, so Raphael, while we have everybody and everybody smiling and happy, um, I want to take one picture and then we're going to pass it into Leon and her team to get us going with our program. So uh, everybody, if you guys could please bring your cameras on, everybody, um, it would be wonderful if we could all have our picture um, for memory. Okay, so Raphael, uh, I, I see a lot of people are still like um, hidden down there. Asael, Annette, Samantha, Nick Hill, Shanice, Hind, Hassan, Lisette, if you guys could please bring your cameras on, it would be great. Um, let's wait a few more seconds. Well, while they're switching the cameras somewhere on the Exculture website, we have a, a blog called the Exculture Picture. And so there we kind of discuss the evolution of the Exculture photographs. So some 10 years ago, um, at some point, you know, at the end of the semester, we always share the photos of our classes, you know, university classes. We all teach at universities, professors. And then at the end of the semester, we send the photo of our whole class. And so yeah. sometime the first photograph was located uh, in 2011, the students were kind of doing like this and nobody paid attention to that. But then like there were two, three more photographs like that. And so I started thinking like, what is going on here? And then I realized they do this X culture X. And yeah. so ever since we discovered this tradition, it became a tradition. And so that's how we make the photos. But the funny thing is that when you look at, for example, photos uh, at the X culture symposium, like on day one, everybody is shy, everybody, you know, like nobody knows nobody. They didn't, you know, like, so everybody kind of does, does like X like that. Like, okay, all right, well. Yeah. And then by the end of the, uh, you know, like first day, everybody goes more like this, like second day, everybody like, yeah. And then by the end of the, of the conference, there are always some, like, if you read that blog, you know, like people fall in love and they make access like with their, you know, feed and all kinds of things, you know, like, and then usually the final photograph of the event is the one where the whole 150 people make like a huge act. Yeah, and yeah. Photograph them from, from up above and then you have like one gigantic X with like 150 yeah. or whatever. So the we're going to do a bunch of those. I, I learned something. I was watching a movie with my daughter with Mr. Rogers. And what I learned was that this yeah. is friendship in, in sign language. Oh, this how appropriate. Friendship <laughs> in sign language. So for, for all of my ex-culture students and friends, oh, yay. I love you guys. 
<laughs> okay. okay, so are we ready? Everybody needs to come there to the camera, please. Carlos, absolutely, you need to be on camera. You, Rafael, you ready? Okay, so first one with our X, please. <laughs> Yay. There you go. Make a smile. <laughs> Yeah. Let's do one with the friendship. So we do yeah. what, like, like, like this. <laughs> that, that's a new one. So it's funny yeah. that for so many years nobody told me that it has a meaning in the sign language. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, Annette, Leon, I'm sorry, Leon, Ania, and your team, take it away. Leon, are you stuck? <laughs> actually, actually, I'm going to help Leon because she said that she maybe has some connection issues. Okay. So I can start, okay? So for those who don't know me, my name is Rafael, I'm from Brazil, and I'll be host, the host of this event alongside all the coaches cohort, okay? Uh, so for now, uh, we will have the sharing your tradition. So I please welcome Drishti, Nicole, Yukta, and Emily to talk about it. Hi, everyone. My name is Drishti, and I'm from India. As you all may know, there are many festivals in India. Uh, today, I would like to share about a festival which is more famous in the northern part of my country. Lori. Lori is a festival of harvest. It is a cultural celebration of winter solstice and is usually celebrated on 13 January. It marks the end of winter and the coming of spring. It is believed that Lori is the longest night of the year. After Lori, the day starts to become longer while the night shortens. It is mostly celebrated by the Sikh and the Hindu community in two or three states of northern India. People celebrate Lori by lighting a bonfire in the evening and sitting around it, dancing, singing the traditional songs. They throw sweets, puffed rice, and popcorns in the flame of fire. Children go house to house singing folk songs and asking for sweets, just like Halloween. A folklore linked to Lori is about a person named Robin Hood of Punjab, Dhula Bhatti. He robbed the rich and gave to the poor. He rescued girls who were being forcibly taken to a slave market. The people of the area loved and respected him. He was a legendary 16th century outlaw and is popular folk hero in Punjab. Most Lori songs are in his praise. The festival is also associated with the worship of fire and sun. Just as no Indian festival is complete without sweets, we have some sweets that is especially eaten during Lori, such as gachak, which is a dry sweet made of sesame seeds or peanuts and jaggery. Well, this is like something like this. That was all about Lori. Thank you for listening. Now I would like to pass to Nicole. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole, so I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, can you guys just let me know? Can someone unmute themselves? Let me know if they can see my screen. Uh, I can, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like I said, my name is Nicole and I'm from Canada. So today I'll be discussing a little bit of the holidays in Canada, um, more specifically in Ontario, and then my connection to skiing during the holidays. Okay, so December in Ontario. So I'm from, more specifically in Canada, I'm from Ontario, and there are three main holidays that are celebrated in December, um, being Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, and Christmas. So Kwanzaa is seven days long, and it's, um, in Swahili, the word Kwanzaa means first, and that signifies the first harvest. So there are seven principles of Kwanzaa, which is why you can see um, seven candles or seven days in Kwanzaa. And the seven days and the seven candles represent the seven principles, which are unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, um, which is being the African heritage and culture, creativity and faith. So the second holiday that is ce celebrated in December is Hanukkah, which is a Jewish holiday celebrating the Maccabees revolt in second century BCE. 
and their reclaiming of the temple. The oil used to light the Hanukkah candles on the menorah lasted for eight days long, and during the celebration, families light an additional candle for eight consecutive nights and indulge in many oily foods. And the last one being the most common um, and most familiar to majority of people, it's Christmas, so I won't go as in depth, but Christmas essentially commemorates the birth of Jesus Christ and it is celebrated by many people in Canada. Okay, so um, all over Canada, we have December break, which takes place this year from December 18 to January 4. So this is when um, kids don't have any school and a lot of parents are, um, and just adults in general are off from work. So with me and my friends during this Christmas break, we like to um, engage in many different activities and visit a few tourist attractions. So the three main things that we like to do during this holiday break are visit something called Kensington Market, which is in Toronto. Um, that picture does not do justice, but it's really a very like multicultural and like there's many fusion restaurants and it really just displays how multicultural uh, Toronto is. The second thing is winter sports. So uh, tobogganing, skiing, snowboarding, playing hockey, um, that's a really, really popular fan favorite among many families. And the final one is just spending a lot of time with your family and friends um, and growing close over the holidays. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss skiing. So my initial plan was to show you guys a, a tour of the hill, but we didn't have enough precipitation and the snow all melted. So I'm not actually able to take you directly on the hill, but hopefully the pictures can do it justice. So I'm a ski instructor and over my break, which did start yesterday, I will be teaching skiing for the vast majority of it. Okay, so in Canada, I just want you guys to get an idea of the ski hills before I show you the one that I work. So these are my three favorites. So um, in Alberta, there's Banff. Uh, you can see the picture that is there. Um, and BC, there's Whistler, and then Mont Tremblant in Quebec. So these are some hills. Um, they're really great. These are like the top three that I would like to visit sometime. Okay, and then in Ontario more specifically, so I'm where, where I'm from, these are the hills that I have visited. So we have Blue Mountain, Horseshoe, and then Mount St. Louis, which are all really great, but not very comparable to the three that was, were shown before. And then this is where I work. So it's very, very small. And I love where I work because it's very small. Um, it gives me a great job to do. It's a lot easier to keep track of kids, but it is much smaller. Um, anyways, that was essentially what I was hoping to discuss with you all today, were essentially the traditions in Toronto. Um, and if you all get the chance, you should come skiing. Um, and I would be happy to give all of you a lesson in person. Uh, so now we're we'll passing it on to Yukta. Thank you, Nicole. So, hi everyone, I am Yukta and I'm from India. So the festival I'll be talking about is Holi and it is celebrated all across the country. However, mostly in the Northern side, what happens is that uh, colors hold a very significant importance in everyone's life. And that is why in India, we, the month wherein Holi is celebrated is known as Fagun. So as it is usually connected at starting of spring, the complete winter has been, the complete winter has ended and now is the starting of spring and we'll be moving towards summer. So the basic theory or why was it celebrated, the mythological story behind it was that uh, there was a true disciple of Lord Krishna who was Prahlad and his family did not allow him to practice or to worship the particular God since they believed that the supremacy of humans is more important than there is nothing such as God or deity which exists in the whole world. And that no. was his cruelty which existed. Because of it, he made sure that he had to kill his child. And in order, he asked his sister to sit with his son on a complete pile of fire. He, she had a complete blanket which had powers and they did not let her burn. She wore that and sat with Prahlad, who was a disciple of Lord Krishna, on a pile of burning fire. At the end, since he said that he had his strong feelings attached and the, the, he worshipped God at that time, so the fire did not harm him. And the blanket which she was wearing, it because of air, it was blown away and she burned. And the disciple who was Prahlad, he got saved. So in order to celebrate that the positivity which God brings in our life, which Lord Krishna spreads, we celebrate this festival. On that day, it is celebrated with colors. Everyone goes, they meet and greet everyone. 
usually gulal that is a red color is mostly used across the country in every state it is been celebrated with different colors and some of uh, in few states if i talk about rajasthan or i talk about uh, jharkhand so there is uh, a tradition in which a lot of people use uh, for fun they hit other people with colors and with sticks so these are the formats in which holi has been celebrated across north india this was the reason and every year it is celebrated from Ma in march from around march 10 to 20 with a lot of zeal and zest colors water but we make sure that uh, since we are moving towards sustainability so rather than using water we always make sure that the essence of brotherhood and essence of diversity which stays in the red color or gulal which has been used on holi so that stays so that is why it is celebrated and it would be great if uh, like somewhere we get a chance like if we have a meeting in march so we can all just use red color and uh, just put it on everyone's cheeks so that symbolizes the true essence of unity and diversity that is why holi is celebrated so this was all about holi so i'll pass it on now now i would like to participants to share about their festival traditions so can can i share yes yeah, sure <laughs> so um uh, the best uh, place to be a kid during christmas is uh, ukraine and the reason for that is because we have basically five christmas so when it comes to christmas ukrainian kids have the most um sort of uh, you know the most to celebrate and let me show you the map so that you know what i'm talking about So in Ukraine a long long time ago like 150 years ago there was some mix up with the calendar and so uh, the uh, Russian empire at that time and some eastern european countries they were on so called uh, gregorian calendar and then the western europe was at that time a julian calendar and then at some point they figured out that there is an error and i think it was like 1905 and so they switched to the new calendar but they kept all the old holidays and so as a result for Ukrainian kids there are literally like five events that you can consider christmas so today 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 is the so called saint nicholas day so this is the day when saint nicholas come to you and gives you presents so when my kids went to sleep even though they're not that small my wife hid some presents under their pillows and so when they wake up they're going to find little chocolates there like kinder surprises and things like that then on december 25 we have the so called catholic christmas uh, so that's the same one that you all have and so on this day kids will get somewhat bigger presents like today they just get little chocolates on catholic christmas they can get something more like a real present then we have the new year eve which is probably the biggest celebration of the year because during the soviet times christmas was considered um you know um um not a good holiday because you know soviet union was war all anti religion so they tried to put more importance on the new year eve new year day and so that's where you have like the biggest christmas tree that's where you have the biggest uh gifts uh instead of santa claus on this day we have the grandpa frost who comes to you looks exactly like santa claus in the same you know red coat and uh you know white beard but uh they just called him a little differently and so that's where people will get the biggest presents but then on january the 7th we have the ukrainian christmas so that's the one that is still you know a legacy from that old calendar so this christmas will be celebrated more than the christmas on the 25th and there will be a lot of festivals and caroling and usually that's when you visit your family and your grandparents beautiful time then we will have the old new year remember there was a difference of two weeks so we have one new year but then we'll have the old new year and so that old new year will still have a lot of caroling and presents and uh, you know and celebration and the kids will still get presents although not as big as on the new year eve but all in all there will be five days when a dude dressed in a red coat with white beard will show up with a bag of gifts and the kids will be will be getting gifts five times so that's why it's the best place to be a kid during the christmas holidays so Uh, hey guys, just to make sure, if you have any question or curious about you, you can come out and speak, or just write in the chat. Okay, you are more than more than welcome to share all your experience and your thoughts. 
I'm uh, just curious if we have any other countries here present today that have two Christmas, two New Year, uh, New Year days, and then in addition, one extra St. Nicholas Day. I think some European countries have a separate St. Nicholas Day. So they have like Christmas and St. Nicholas Day, right? So they get to get presents twice. So any other? Just curious. Okay. All right. Well, I guess Ukrainians are the luckiest kids. So, well, in Ukraine, they celebrate the New Year on January 1, but the actual celebration happens on New Year Eve. So New Year Day, that's when everybody, you usually stay, you know, past midnight, and then sometimes you celebrate till the morning. So January the 1st, that's the day when you basically sleep all day because the previous night you were partying all night. So that's the day when you kind of wake up at like 1 p.m. and then slowly come to senses and then maybe have like Afro party with your family, you know, towards the end of the day, just kind of eat the leftovers left from the party from the night before. Yeah. And I, need I, I would like to add, to... I'm sorry, in yeah, Ukraine, also uh, before um, Christmas, we uh, bring to our relatives or friends um, like kucha. Uh, yep, it's a yep. special d uh, dish and also we can sing um, like songs, uh, we call it shadrivki. Uh, and also uh, boys uh, can go to their relatives or their family and uh, do uh, like the special, I don't know how to, how to name it, uh, how to say it. And, and, and the funny thing is that those should really like it's like Ukrainian carols, they actually yeah. are about spring. So even though they're sun, sun in, um, in January, but the themes are all about the spring. And so again, I think there was some mix up with calendar even before that, or maybe they just adopted some, you know, pagan holidays to Christian holidays. But it's kind of funny that you would have like two feet of snow and they're singing about, you know, like birds coming back, you know, from, from warm countries and things like that. So, so the calendar in Ukraine is very mixed up, but as a result, the kids get presents five times a year or five times for Christmas. No, even uh, bigger because uh, they also can dress in special like our Ukrainian traditional clothes. And a group of kids can just uh, go to the like houses or buildings uh, and they can can uh, uh, carry like this big Christ uh, or I don't know it's like a star uh, also like singing songs and also get some gifts candies it's like very cool yeah, yeah. I have a question and I want to ask Raphael and Carlos about this because I know <clears throat> that in Latin America, the traditions are very, very religious. My daughter is actually engaged to somebody from Colombia. And um, the family, uh, several days before Christmas, the family actually have get togethers in each other's houses to pray. So Carlos and Rafael, can you um, tell me what that is? And, and what's the story behind that? Uh, so just a little bit of an explanation. Uh, I believe you're talking about posada. Yes. And uh, posada, what basically means is that uh, during the Christmas season, uh, just to celebrate the birth of Christ, uh, people would gather together in their homes and they would celebrate with tamales and uh, pozole and a lot of different uh, Hispanic uh, food. And they would just congregate as a whole. Unfortunately, I'm living in California at the time, so it's 6 a.m., uh, but uh, due to the uh, pandemic restrictions that they have, uh, we did not celebrate this year uh, just because they were not allowing people to congregate for more than uh, five to 10 people, I believe, uh, just here in uh, California. I'm not sure in other states, yeah. but the, the gist or the idea of it is that you spend time with family and you're able to spend uh, just a little extra time right before Christmas and talk with your members that you haven't seen for years. Right. So it's just in preparation for everybody to gather together. And most people, what they tend to do is they leave during this time to, to do a posada and they stay with their family members for that entire week until Christmas. And some even will stay until New Year. So it's, What's it's really... the, but there's a prayer that goes with that, right? It, it's almost like, so I've gone to it a couple of times. And I know that there's a whole, whole ceremonial thing where you actually um, sing and there's music and there's um, 
um, like special traditions that, that you have to exercise? Right. So yeah, the music is all Christian based just because it's a big uh, Latin America and Mexico, Colombia, all these places are very uh, religious. They're very Catholic. Uh, so all these songs will be about the birth of Christ. So it's, it's literally a preparation to the actual day, which is on December 25th. We also have another special day that not a lot of people know about, and that's uh, Dia de los Magos. And that is also a kid's day where they receive gifts from uh, the God Kings who came to see Christ. So that's on, I believe, January 6th. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, during this day, they also receive gifts, candy, and uh, some lucky kids will receive money so they can spend it on other things they want. So I, I think in the United States, that's called Three Kings Day. Three Kings Day, oh, yeah. yeah, that three Kings Day. yeah. And what we do, because uh, you guys know I'm in South Florida, and I actually live in a town that the people from Latin America has nicknamed Western Suela, <laughs> because <laughs> it's, you know, a lot of people from Venezuela, when Venezuela, um, uh, the, the party turned communistic, a lot of the people, the affluent people came to Weston and renamed our little town Western Suela. But um, my community has actually started the tradition of keeping the Christmas lights and Christmas decorations up until Three Kings Day because we have so many Hispanic people in the community. In, in the previous years, you know, we would say, oh, never let the past year hit the new year. So everybody was required to take all their Christmas decorations down by the 31st of December. But now since, you know, a lot of this Hispanic culture is coming into South Florida, now everybody celebrates until January the 6th, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting. But Rafael, how is this different in Brazil? Uh, actually, uh... I don't have that in Brazil. I don't know because it's, I, I think that's not a Brazilian thing, but I, so, but I also I'm, have Japanese background. So mm -hmm. I have different celebrations, okay? So uh, for the Christmas and New Year's, New Year's Eve, it's the same for, uh, for everyone, I think. But uh, in the uh, January 1st, we actually have something different. Uh, we, need to visit uh, a house of an, an uncle that has kind of a, not platform, but I don't know how to say in English, but uh, we have some space for the uh, dead, rel re dead rel relatives. So we just pray for them to, to give us a great ear. And also, the older ones, they give money to the kids to uh, represent, uh, how do I say, represent, I actually forgot the word, but to <laughs> give hope, to give hope for yeah. the next year. That's what we have here. So are you talking about like a space in the house where you have like the pictures of the relatives and like saint figures and things like that? Yeah, yeah. In Japanese, uh -huh. we call butsudan. Uh-huh, yeah. And it's very similar to what you have like in the church, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But smaller one. And yeah, yeah. and, and we... that's interesting. That originates from the Chinese mentality of, or the Chinese tradition of ancestor worship. Yeah, 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 that's correct. Very nice. Okay. Um, I'm, I think, uh, Leon, we've thrown your schedule off track. So we're going to give it back to you now, Leon. <laughs> um, no, it's certainly fine. Emily actually has a video to play. So Emily, if you want to go ahead with that. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, I gave a little, I did a video recording as I went through to make my family Christmas ornament this year, because every year my family goes through and um, a lot of times we buy one, but this year we, well, you'll see. I'm gonna share my screen and show you guys. Okay. Are you allowed to share? Oh, okay. 
Can you see it? People. This is Emily. I'm one of the academy coaches, and I live in Florida. And one of I'm my questions is that every year we go and find a special. It's not you showing. Need to share your screen. Yeah, I'm okay. seeing your folder actually. Oh shoot. Uh. Oh no. Uh, I thought it was working. Um. Hey, X culture people. So it's this not is Emily. I'm I, I think that you need to share again because oh. I think that you choose the wrong uh, probably, window. Yeah, you're probably sharing a specific program oh. on the screen overall. Um, when you share it, allows you to choose okay. either a program or just general screen if you have only one screen. Oh. Okay. So I guess stop sharing and then share again and then choose what you're sharing. Yeah, so um, Emily, we're gonna let you take care of that. And then Leon, let's let's come back to her. So go to the next thing and then we'll come back to Emily. Um, Rafael, I'll pass it back to you because I do not trust my internet at all, so. <laughs> okay, uh, can you stop sharing? Let me see. So I, I just forgot to talk about it in the beginning, but we will have a giveaway by the end of the event. So please stay tuned, okay? Uh, for now, we will have a breakout, our first breakout session. So I will divide you guys into breakout rooms. So you guys will have a little game and we, we will be able to share more things about you, okay? I will start the breakout room right now. Is it working? No, nope, Raphael, no, not working. Wait a minute then. Do breakout rooms work in webinars or is it only in meetings? Meetings, only, only in meetings. Mm -hmm. Hello, it's working. Uh, do we have to go join the breakout rooms now or does it take us to it automatically? No, you're already in the one. I okay. Think. So uh, which one will be presenting? Uh, I was supposed to be in one with Dr. Voss. Really? Wait a minute. Hi. No, the, 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 with Dr. Vaz, it will be the second one, right? Not the first one. Uh, Wait a minute, let me check. Here, I'm going to click... There's a thing that says join breakout room. I'm going to try that.
Hello. Hi. It's only it's us that we're here. Us. No, it's only us. <laughs> I guess we were the only ones who left when we were supposed to. I guess I nobody has noticed it. We can, uh, continue, yeah. we can continue to talk. <laughs> yeah, wait, I will get with the questions. Isa, you didn't tell us what was the goofiest, funniest thing you've ever done. Um, actually, when I was younger, I did used to play pranks with my cousins. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, I don't remember. I was telling this story the other day. I don't think it was to you guys, but I'll go ahead. Oh, Raphael is calling us back in 30 seconds. But um, when I was a little girl in the Philippines, we lived in, um, in a barrio, which a barrio is like a really poor, like imagine like really, really poor section of Manila. And um, I remember my mother and father, and I was really little, they had rented like this Nipa hut that used to be a pig pen. So imagine that it was, must have been a big pig because there was one room and then there was an, an opening and then you went in and there was a bedroom in the back and then just an opening in the front. And um, we didn't have running water, we didn't have electricity, but I remember being surrounded by so many of my cousins and my favorite thing to do, our favorite thing to do as little kids was to go up to the roof of a house and watch the garbage float down the river and our favorite game, so this was our video game, Ezekiel, equivalent to your video game, is we would take trash and we would throw it on top of the trash as it's floating down the river. <laughs> that was our game in the Philippines. You know, we always found ways to keep ourselves entertained. Um, okay, Leon, we're back. You're the lady of the hour. Dr. B, what's a unique fact about you that nobody knows? We just learned lots of interesting things about people in our group. Like, did you know, for example, that Jaron has a black belt in Taekwondo? He is a professional bowler and he also a junior medic and he actually goes on ambulance calls and just came back from his medical duty today. So like, oh nobody my knows. God. Yeah, would you know that? I so told what, you, I told you he was a superhero. Yeah, so don't mess with him because <laughs> he's got a black belt and don't try to hustle him for, you know, in bowling because he's going to win. Yeah, <laughs> I told you he was a superhero and we need to yeah. keep a close eye on Jaron yeah. so he doesn't go to the dark side. <laughs> we got to keep him in the light side. <laughs> well, I came back from a gunshot case today. I kind of told Leon about that. Oh, oh my God. was very influential for a lot of children and he had this one particular book called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory which is about this boy called Charlie and uh, Charlie goes to a chocolate factory owned by this really crazy individual called Willy Wonka. Um, Willy Wonka is a very very famous chocolatier worldwide and he hands out these things called golden tickets. Only five of them are given out and it's like um, Millions of kids worldwide go crazy just to go to his factory because it's that amazing. And so we are planning on doing something very similar, wherein we'll be handing out five different golden tickets to all of you. And those five golden tickets will give you guys um, certain uh, really cool and really interesting prizes. So let us get into what those golden tickets are. So ticket number one is a chance to attend a one hour session with Dr. Vass on college applications. So um, college applications are a very uh, important thing in today's age and time because it's a very competitive market. And today we'll be randomly generating and finding out who the winner of this particular ticket is. This is a very big opportunity for all of you guys. And the winner for this particular... So how is the winner selected? Is it random or are you are spinning a like virtual wheel or how does it work? I have a random generator here with me. And we will be using that to uh, view the particular winner. Um, the winner for this is Dana Jones. So congrats, Dana. Um, Ooh, congratulations. Dana. All right, let's schedule a meeting sometime. So, um, Dana, it would be really helpful if you could um, like privately message um, either Rafael or me your email so we could send this out to you officially. That would be no really problem. 
I had an inkling that I would win this one for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, so or some reason. I don't know. All right. Are you applying to college soon? Um. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good timing then. Yeah. All right. So the second one is a chance to attend a one-hour session uh, with Dr. Leilani on professional development. Again, a very important thing in today's day and age. And so let's try to find out who won this one. All right. And the winner is, drum roll please. It's Margarita. Um, Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Oh my God. I just, <laughs> my thought was like Margarita. It's like, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Very good. So you and I get to spend an hour together on professional and personal development. Yay. Uh, yes. So next we have a free X culture seat. This will allow you to join in for the program next year, completely free of any costs. Okay. And so Tejas, can I just say that if you are a coach and have already done this, that you can gift this to an immediate member or somebody that you love, or if you want to do the virtual, let's say that you did Academy and you'd like to do the virtual, that that is also usable for that. Yeah. Um, so for this, the winner as per our random generator is going to be uh, it's Faiza, uh, Faiza Amanullah from, okay, yes, she is one. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Faiza, do you want to do uh, X culture again or do you want to move up to the uh, culture? Course. Okay, I think you should do X culture again. Uh, uh, can I do both of them? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can only do one at a time. <laughs> Yeah, good job. Um, so don't be disheartened, guys. We have two more prizes left. And one of those is another free seat for X Culture. It's basically the same rules apply to this one as well. And now we shall be finding out who the winner of this particular ticket is. And it is going to be um, Nikhil. Nikhil Khetan. Congra oh, yay, Nikhil. Yay. So Nick Hill, are you going to do X Culture Academy again, or do you want to do something else? Oh, I think we might have lost him. Okay, go ahead, Tejas. Okay. And we have finally another free seat for X Culture. Um, same rules apply to this as well. Now let's find out who the winner of this is. And the winner for this is Luis. We're from Netherlands, congrats. Oh, Louis. Yay, so good. Thank Yay. you. Okay, so Nick Hill, what are you guys going to do with your tickets? Are you going to do, I guess, boss, we, we will honor either you can do a repeat of Academy, yep. you can do the coaching program as well. Or, or so, you can give it as a gift to your friend. Or you can give it as a gift to somebody else. No. And just make sure just make sure to send me an email with your name and if you're going to nominate one friend or relative, okay? Yay! Congratulations everybody. Margarita, I can't wait for us to spend the hour together. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, so I guess we are now closing. We're at the end part of our um, holiday celebration. And uh, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for first uh, the Academy coaches, um, you know, the coaches in general, Ezekiel and Carlos being at the virtual and um, how you guys really have made this X culture experience for me, and I, I'm, I'm assuming also for Dr. Boss, although I just said don't assume, right? That you've made this experience for us so much more manageable, so much more enjoyable, and um, really like expanded our um, energy to be able to reach more people. Like what we do as X culture cannot happen in the same manner had it, had it not been for the leadership and the students who wanted to engage with us. Because again, 
this is a collaboration among key stakeholders. It's just not, you know, the leadership. Dr. Vas? Yeah, no, exactly the thing. So <clears throat> sometimes people ask how we built essentially a global, a truly global organization uh, without a huge budget. Uh, because technically we do have participants from about 100 countries and uh, we have thousands of um, customers, if you want to call it that way, uh, over 150 universities in a given semester. And over the years, I think it's like 400 universities have participated. So it is big. It is, it, it is gigantic. In fact, it's, it's not even, you know, there is nothing even close to this. And all of that has been done essentially without any, you know, substantial resources. And the answer is how is, you know, we rely on, on people like you. So like, for example, in this coaching program, I mean, in this academy program this semester, I mean, Raphael, uh, Leon, Annette, uh, well, I'm not even going to try to name everyone, Ania. So uh, Dana, you guys have been doing such a great job like Ezekiel, for example, like if I needed to hire Ezekiel with his XCM, whatever he calls that, you know, fancy schmancy stuff, we are talking six figure per year easily and probably more. And so, and I'm not even sure if he would apply because I'm sure he would have many other offers with even bigger checks. Mm -hmm. And so here somehow we get him essentially, you know, his, his help for free. Dana, like, again, if we needed to hire someone to do all that promotion, all those, you know, uh, videos and blogging, I don't even know how much it would cost, but I mean, probably more than I make in a year. And now she's doing it on her own initiative. So all these games, all these, you know, and so I'm looking at, for example, people like Jaren here. I mean, the dude spent the whole day doing this medical stuff, saving people, you know, gun wounds and whatever else, comes home late at night and then comes here and runs the show. Again, I don't even know if there is money that could buy something like, you know, like who would do it after work. And here he comes on his own initiative. So, uh, and we have what about 87 coaches in the entire X culture like this. We have dozens of professors. Some professors just basically come and say, okay, here are my students, manage them. But many of them work very hard. So some of them manage, you know, specific programs like Dr. B here manages the symposium, manages the um, academy track. Karen Linden manages that uh, the, the coaching program. And Carlos is here again. Carlos was probably doing even more work as far as the timing goes. Uh, but then we also have like Tim Muth, you know, the, the, the person, uh, the professor, he's responsible for sort of ethical issues. So every time there is like a difficult conflict in a team, or maybe sometimes with the different, you know, whatever happens, he is the one who does the investigation and then makes sure that everybody is treated, you know, ethically and fairly. Again, over the years, it's accumulated to, you know, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours possibly. And so I guess that's how we do it. I mean, you know, we are not really paid, so we just do it because we love it. But I think I kind of like it that way, because if it became just a regular organization where we do it for money, I'm not sure if I would want to do it. I mean, like I have a job, I have a nice salary, so I don't really. So yeah, thank you very much, all of you. And those of you who were not part of this leadership team yet, those of you who were just students, well, maybe you will join us next semester. So we have more job than, or more work than, than, than we can do. So we can always use a pair of, you know, hardworking hands and a bright mind. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and just to um, support what Dr. Boss said, you know, that this organization is only as strong and as good as the people that are in it. And the more people that are in it, that are committed, that understand our value and that, that agree, the agreement, right? That agree that the world should be a better place and one of our contribution uh, to make the world a better place is X culture. And if you believe that this is something that you can uh, help us grow and build and, and make stronger, please stay with us and join us in, in this initiative. Because um, I, once upon a time when I was a little girl, I did say that the, war, the road to peace is through um, international business or global business. And when I went to grad school, I'm like, no, that's wrong. And then now I believe that again. I believe again that the world to peace is through international collaborations. And it's because of Dr. Vas Taras and his program. So a hand for Dr. Taras. Yay. Well, but, but I would like to follow up on what you said. So what we do is not, um, uh, you, you know, there is this famous expression by Steve Jobs when he was trying to hire someone uh, out of Pepsi Cola. And he said, do you want to keep selling sugar water or do you want to come with me and change the world? 
And so if you come with us, I think we are changing the world. First of all, we see a lot of changes at the personal level. So we see kids going to top schools because of exculture experience. We see many students getting jobs at very good you know, um, um, companies, like literally, you know, like Fortune 500 companies, again, because of exculture. So, you know, as far as personal benefit, that's obvious and, uh, you know, hundreds of stories of success. So that's easy. But even when you look at the world as a world, as a whole planet, you know, like, like the globe, uh, we know that um, after people complete X culture, uh, we, we actually collect data and we test it regularly. So we know cultural intelligence improves, uh, prejudice goes down, interest in working with people from other cultures improves, knowledge improves, skills improve. Like we know when people do X culture the second time, they're almost always a team leaders. So they must have learned something the first time. We know that they do a better job because the report quality is better when they do it the second time. So we know you become better global citizens. And so this world is facing a lot of global problems, you know, like the one going on right now, for example, with pandemic, that does require people who know how to work with people from other cultures, other countries. So we do need people with skills and, 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 and you know, experience and motivation to, to do global projects. And so if a sculpture can prepare, can train, can, can improve, uh, you know, a few tens of thousands, we're approaching now a hundred thousand, you know, people like you. And so you will become tomorrow's uh, politicians, community leaders, businessmen, company owners. Uh, I don't know, maybe we will improve the world in that way. Maybe we will solve the next pandemic five days faster. Maybe we will, you know, I don't know, build a colony on Mars five days faster. And maybe we will reduce the chance of the third world war by 5% or 10%. And if we do so, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good cause. So we're not doing this, you know, just to make a few dollars and sell more sugar water, so to speak. So we are actually trying to save the world. And if we, you know, improve chances of the world being saved by, you know, 5, 10, 3%, 1% even, I'll consider that we haven't spent this, you know, our time on this planet, uh, you know, for nothing. So hopefully you will join us in this cause. Peace and love, you guys. Peace and love. I, I also just want to thank you, Carlos and Ezekiel, for their time to join us today to share their experience and their knowledge. Thank you very much. Would you guys want to say a few words, Carlos, Ezekiel? So you are more from the, from the adult program, right? Because most of the kids here are kids. You are primarily involved with the university program. So you're dealing with people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Any, any words of wisdom or experiences or closing remarks from you guys? Well, uh, something if I may say is that I am amazed by the work that you guys are doing at the academy track. It shows that we really have a lot of bright students and participants that will be the future of the world. And definitely, even though it seems that we're a small group, it definitely shows that we're making a difference. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, Carlos. You must have spent, my estimate is that you've been spending about 20, 30, maybe up to 40 hours a week over this semester. So some weeks you probably spent literally like full time. So I, I'm even afraid to add, add it all up because it will be a gigantic number of hours. But yeah, thank you so much for spending all that time. So Zekiel, what's your, uh, you know, closing remarks? Zekiel is our, uh, let's call it brains because he's done, doing all that high tech, super, you know, artificial intelligence, big data, uh, XCM, RA, you know, I don't even, I lost track of those abbreviations that he uses, but some very, very high tech stuff. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Vaz. I mean, uh, we, li we live in a world where things are changing so rapidly. And the way that, you know, academy coaches are doing uh, is really amazing what you're able to do at your age. So I think you should be very proud of yourself for coming so far. And you have a bright future ahead of you. Go for it. And I'm sure you guys will be able to achieve Thank you. All right. Yeah. Everybody, Thank peace and love. Uh, Raphael, um, open. Are you going to open up the next meeting in um, the We Evolve account? I, I can do it if you want. Okay. So, uh, coaches, academy coaches, we have a quick meeting, and then um, and then, boss, you have to be there. We have another quick meeting after that. So, two more meetings, boss. 
And congratulations to teams 16 and 19 for the wonderful presentations you did, uh, 16, 19, and 31 for the wonderful presentations you did in the presentation and team 16 for being the best presenting team. And we have the finalist list um, for, the, for the all you know, best report competitions. And so while most of those teams are MBA and university teams, uh, it seems like the team, team uh, just a second, uh, there are two academy teams on the finalist list. Team 27 <clears throat> and team um, uh, 32. So they made it on the finalist list, but we haven't decided who's gonna be the winner. So we'll see um, soon. Okay. Thank guys. you. Bye bye, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, guys. Bye bye, Happy everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.